everybody. My name is Monica, and uh, I am going to talk about smart contracts and all kinds of stuff that we've been working on at Cadena in terms of smart contracts. We've uh, been working furiously for almost three years now on PACT, and we're coming up with new stuff all the time, so it's nice to check in and share with everybody what we've been working on. So briefly, what is Cadena? It's a whole bunch of things that I'm not going to talk about during this talk, but if you want to know about them later, you can find me afterwards. We're a massively parallelized proof-of-work public blockchain that runs a consensus protocol called ChainWeb. We run the PACT smart contract language, which we also developed in-house. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today in this talk is our goal for PACT is to let it become a universal standard for smart contracts. And with that goal in mind, we've been working with other projects to bring PACT to other environments beyond just Cadena. So not only does PACT work on top of our public blockchain, we also have a private blockchain that we developed in-house, which is called Cadena Kuro. And we're also we're supporting a Cadena Mint integration, which is packed on top of Tendermint. And as soon as they finish their IBC spec, we're looking to integrate with Cosmos and the Cosmos ecosystem. So when I talk about packed, it's not just for Cadena. We're trying to make it for everybody. So if you want to talk later about being interested in putting packed on top of a system that you've been developing, I'm happy to talk about that too. Also, in case you haven't been following Cadena, we're actually going live with mining on the network this week, which has been a Herculean effort that took two years, but now we're finally ready. So, PACT. PACT is our smart contract language, and we first developed it in 2016, and the history behind PACT is so our team originally came from the JP Morgan blockchain research team and developed what eventually became JPM coin. But the goal behind PACT is for non-engineers to be able to read and understand PACT. And the, one of the features that we, we talk about when we talk about PACT, you can, all the docs are at pactlang.org. One of the goals that we have for PACT is for it to be human readable. And for us, that means that there's a limited functionality set in terms of functions, but we think that all the things that you can do with PACT are all the things that you actually need to do on a blockchain. So we started by thinking about what is a blockchain? What, what do you need to actually execute on an environment in a blockchain? And so PACT is essentially a souped up database scripting language. It's interpreted rather than compiled, which means that all of your code on chain is actually totally transparent. When you put your contracts up there, people can read your code and understand it, which means that all of the problems that people have in terms of importing other people's smart contracts and inheriting and making references to external smart contracts, you can actually go and check to make sure that they do what you want it to do. And that's a whole theme that I'm going to unpack in this talk, is knowing what your smart contracts actually do, being able to verify that they do what you want them to do for not only your own smart contracts, but other people's smart contracts as well. And so there's this whole culture right now about smart contracts where when you talk to people that develop in Solidity, for example, when you're, they're talking about actually making applications, the scope of the smart contract language that they, itself that they write, they try to keep it as small as possible. It's, oh, well, I wrote most of this app in JavaScript, but like 10% of it is Solidity. That's because right now we don't have a lot of safety guarantees around what you can do in Solidity. And when people have been writing and developing applications in Pact, often they'll be like, well, we could do this in a smart contract too. We actually had one of our app developers that was working on an external project come and say, we really want a messaging app inside of our, of our app. Can we do that in Pact? And we were like, that's a bad idea. It's nice that you want to do all the things in Pact. That's what we wanted. But maybe don't make a messenger app inside of your blockchain application. So. I'm a little bit about core features in PACT, features that we've been in PACT for quite some time. And then after this, I'm going to talk about some of the new stuff that we've just been working on. So PACT, we talked about it being interpreted, which means that the code that you write is the code that's actually on-chain. This means that we can also have extremely descriptive error messages that can pinpoint exactly where in your contract you're going wrong. It just doesn't say out of gas because we can actually be descriptive about what you're doing inside of your smart contract. Another cool thing about PACT is that there's, when you create 
a new contract, there's abstraction between your address, like your key, you, you create a new address, your contract, and it has a key set. That actually is not the same thing as the name of your contract, which means that if you wanna go back and change your contract, you can upgrade it to a new version. So if you have bugs in your contract that you've actually shipped on a chain, you can go and you can fix them, which I think is pretty cool and actually necessary if you wanna actually have production smart contracts that run a real blockchain company. All of our contracts are multi-sig natively, and this is, goes hand in hand with our capabilities-based permissioning system, which comes up later in the slides. But the idea is that you, when you create a contract, you give it a governance function. And this function can have all kinds of stuff packed into it, like who has the right to sign this transaction? And that signage can actually be a set, or it can be a function that de defines different people depending on what time, it, it, when it is. Like this month I can sign it, but next month you can sign it. All these things are built natively into PACT. And then all of this ac complex access control, it actually extends all the way through everything that you can make in PACT, all the way down to the granular database level. Um, this is a controversial feature for people that have been writing Solidity for a long time. But PACT is on purpose, we made it Turing incomplete. And what that means is all of the times that you've ever thought, I really want to compute Dijkstra's algorithm to give me the shortest path between New York and LA and I want to do it on a blockchain, you can't do it in PACT, I'm sorry. But that's okay because I don't really think you should be doing it on a blockchain anyway. The things that you should be doing on a blockchain are transaction based. I wanna take something that's in state X and I wanna transform it into state Y. And PACT is really great for this because it lets you reach in transparently into the data itself and it gives you clear database access and it gives, knows how you can make access permissions control. But we're not actually iterative in the same way that you might think that you wanted to put an entire virtual machine on a blockchain. And that's a choice that we made from a design perspective that gave us a lot of benefits in terms of security. And what I'm gonna say about Turing completeness in general is that all of these languages that say that they're Turing complete, you're still limited by gas on a blockchain, which means that you can say that you're gonna iterate your computation forever, but at the end of the day, you need to pay all of the gas that you need in order to actually run your computations. And I think that because that eventually that will terminate, that means that you're not actually turn complete anyway, which means that you're exposing people to risk and you're not actually giving them any of the benefits that they say that they get. So one of the cool things, because PACT is Turing incomplete on purpose, we can actually take the entire syntax tree of PACT and unroll it, convert it into smtlib and shove it straight into the Z3 solver, which means that all of PACT user code can be formally verified. You can write code and then annotate it, save the file, and the formal verification system will actually tell you whether your code does what you think it will do. This goes back to the idea of you want to be able to trust your smart contracts and trust your code. We, people are not going to actively write smart contracts and write real business code that actually transfers value unless they know that they can trust their smart contracts. So, so some of these other projects are talking about, oh, you know, we've, we're working on formal verification. But a lot of them are actually talking about formally verifying their compilers. Like, oh, when you compile this code into something else, then we know that it doesn't have any mistakes in the compiler. That's not what I'm talking about. User code in PACT can be formally verified. And people are working on that right now for Solidity, for verifying some subset of Solidity. I think the maker team has been pouring a Herculean effort into formally verifying a subset of Solidity. When they do that, they're making a Turing incomplete subset of Solidity. So people are starting to move to this place where we started three years ago, which is that you don't necessarily need a Turing complete language, especially if you want cool things like formal verification. Uh, this slide is all about the capabilities-based permissioning system in PACT. And if you have not been into permission control theory since the 80s, which I wasn't until I started working on this, um, you probably haven't heard of capabilities. Capabilities is basically the inverse of having an access control list. Instead of having like a smart contract that lists all of the 
contracts that can access some particular information. Capabilities allow you to bestow permissions at the object level, like, oh, everybody who's in this set can do X, Y, Z. They can sign this. They can access this information. They can write to this database. They can request coins from this contract. And so each contract in PACT actually gives user and module level governance. And there is no central authority or central access control list. And something that's actually, <laughs> because we've been doing all of our testnet stuff for Kadena lately, we made a bunch of dApps for the, all the employees at Kadena to play around with the network. And we actually had one of our developers write a contract that secretly in the code said, if you run this contract, it will give me all of your money. <laughs> <laughs> which was awesome to see people running that code and then suddenly giving them all the money. So then one of our developers decided, you know what I want? I want a capability that tells me what I want this contract not to do. I want this contract to say, I don't want you to give them all my money. I only want it to give them $10. And so now we have inverted capabilities, which you can put, which we've been calling user guards, to disallow unwanted behaviors on contracts. So you can make a contract, and you can send it out to people, and you can say, I don't want it to do X, Y, and Z. And all of that is built all into the capability system in PACT. So because we have all this cool stuff, we've been brainstorming what can you do with this? What can you make with a capabilities-based permissioning system that has key sets that can be rotated and granularly swapped and all of this stuff? And so something that we've come up with that we are planning to do when we launch the mainnet launch proper in the beginning of December is this idea of community gas stations. And this unpacks several of the ideas that we've been talking about earlier in this talk about PACT. So first, let me tell you why I think this is cool and necessary. Right now, when you want a user to join your dApp, they want them to sign up, they have to do all this crypto stuff, which is fine if you've been immersed in crypto culture for the last n years and you know all about how keys work and permissioning works. But if you don't, it can be a huge barrier to entry for this stuff. Because in order, you can't just like click a button and sign up. You have to create an account, which means generating a wallet, which means making a key and putting your key somewhere so that you know that they're safe. And then you probably also need to purchase some tokens in order to run the gas to create your account contract, which means you go through an exchange. And by this point, if you're just a casual user who heard about this blockchain thing, you've already stopped. You've, you've given up. And the Ethereum community also knows about this issue. There, uh, there are several EIPs, I think there are at least three or four of them now, where people are like, how do we solve this problem of new people having to deal with gas? So w one of the, the designs that we've come up with is if you have a packed contract, you can actually have co-signers because this idea of native multisig if you, as a DAP developer, create an app, then you can actually have the first step to somebody joining. You auto-generate a contract that, that creates their keys for them on whatever local machine they're using to generate. And then it creates a transaction with you as the DAP developer as a cosigner. And then it sends it to you. You can verify their code because it's transparent and not compiled. And then you can sign their transaction in order to pay for their gas. Cool it can be cooler. In addition to this idea that a dApp developer can pay for a user's gas, we came up with this idea of we as a company, Kadena, have a bunch of platform tokens that we said we were going to use for the benefit of the community. So for the benefit of the community, we are going to make community gas stations, which essentially is a contract on the public network that auto-refunds somebody's gas. And you can just reach out to Gadena and say, I'm developing an app, and I want tokens to be refunded to me for my gas. And so because of the co-signing and because of capabilities, this contract can automatically check did this person who submitted a transaction with the gas station as a cosigner have the correct capabilities, are they in the capability set for this gas station, we will refund their money to them. And so this way, you can have a dApp developer that actually gets free gas and their users don't have to have gas ahead of the first place. But then we were like, we could make this even cooler. What if we make it so that because you have a gas station, 
then you can have an external party, somebody who just happens to hold a bunch of tokens, make money with their tokens by fronting the gas for somebody else's gas station, which then the DAP developer can pay like a small fee, like maybe 1% or 2%, in, to this other person who can then submit a transaction which gets refunded by the gas station, and then the DAP developer can pay them a small fee. So the DAP developer never even has to hold any tokens at all other than the absolute small fee amount. So these are all, this idea of you can consume and verify and co-sign and submit a transaction that all runs on this capabilities-based permissioning system, these kinds of things can start to stack because of these smart contracts that we've developed using PACT. So suddenly you have the decentralized economic service providers that are fronting gas so that DAP developers hold fewer tokens, users experience easier onboarding, and then people that actually hold tokens can monetize them in a way that otherwise they would just be holding things that don't really do anything on the network. So we are have a whole chunk of tokens all set aside for community gas stations and we've started programming them. So if you're interested in having a gas station allocated to your gas project, your DAP, let me know. And uh, we think that this is a more useful way of using tokens on the network than burning them in order to balance your economic incentives. And uh, I, I think that there are a lot of other cool things out there that we haven't even started thinking about what we can make. So if you have other cool ideas that you want to use PAX smart contracts for, let us know. So what are we working on? So in collaboration with the Cosmos team, Cadenament now exists. I'm going to do a demo of that at the Cosmos Hackathon this weekend if you're interested in writing PACT on top of Tendermint. And then once we get IBC spec completed from the Cosmos team, the goal is to also put PACT and Tendermint integrated into the Cosmos system. So you can write PACT on Cadena and have it talk to PACT on Cosmos. And then uh, hopefully we're talking to a couple other blockchain projects too that are interested in putting PACT on top of their ecosystem, but I can't talk about that yet because we haven't signed anything. Kadena Public Blockchain is live this week. If you want to talk about mining, come find me later. And our coinless sale registration is today and goes live next week. And the network transfers happen in December. That, I think, was all the things that I wanted to talk about. So if you have questions about PACT, I will take questions for, like, 10 minutes. Questions. Raise them high if you got them. Anyone? Right here in front. Start it up. Uh, I'm just kind of curious what kind of uh, capability is being granted when you interact with the contract if by default it can do anything with your account? <laughs> that, well, it depends on what you set as the default. Because when we were making these apps, we had everything as just a totally vanilla, complete, full access control. And we were like, actually, that's not smart to have as the default. So you can have it set to whatever you want it to be. And so we started setting the default to uh, don't actually take any tokens from my account unless I tell you to. <laughs> it seems obvious in hindsight, but like, you know, until you actually have somebody reach in and take all your coins, you didn't really think about it. Yeah. Other questions? Other questions? Take a deep breath, fill your head with some oxygen. You might have a question that comes up. If not, if people are making their way out, after this will be lunch. We'll kick it back off at 1.15. But before we do, I just want one more round of applause because this was very engaging. Thanks, everybody.